Hello and welcome back to the Crystal Palace Career Mode on Football Manager 2020. Today we've got Season 2 and the first game will be against Manchester United but let's look at what we've done with the transfers in the summer window. As we know from the last of Season 1 I left you on a bit of a cliffhanger with Joel Ward he asked to leave and I can confirm that he has left the club. He's gone out to Burnley I got him. I got it for very. It was very, very cheap deal. It was two point eight million. But he wanted to leave. I weren't really going to play him as much. I could have got any someone else, probably better as well, to go right back. And I've also got Hickey here anyway. Thirty years old. It is a shame, but it is what it is. I had to had to happen. Biggest sale we've made is James MacArthur. Now I weren't playing him. Twenty nine years old. I got it. About five million, near enough five million, four point eight. There you go. Made a profit on him slightly. Like I said, he weren't going to get played. I've got better midfielders here, a lot better, a lot younger, and he was just just about right for the championship. So Sheffield United picked him up. Here's what it is. Like I said, Joel Ward and MacArthur, or McCarthy, sorry, leaving the club. Now, as we can see, there's a lot of just loanees. People we loaned out, Luke Dreyer Piek has left the club to Stoke on loan, which I feel just only 18. He didn't play brilliant, but he played all right. Only one goal in 18 games was quite good, but he's still young, so I uh, have to really. Ben Teke has gone out on loan to um, where are these? A Brazilian club, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they are Brazilian. I was trying to sell him, no one wanted to buy him. Hopefully, he just gets more game time out here so someone will come in and try and pick him up. Other than that, you can see, really, oh, we'll talk about this player first. Now, Ben Davies, I did make a mistake here. I signed him for 4.4 million from Preston, and he's not going to be good enough. He's only 24, so I sent him, tried to sell him, but obviously he's, he's only just signed a contract, so I sent him out on loan to New York Red Bulls, and hopefully they'll try and buy him, and he'll get more game time, so I'll try and buy him next year. We could get a profit from him next year, but it was a mistake from my part. But continuing on, look, we as you can see, oh, Wayne Hennessy left the club. 400k, he weren't going to get played. He was only going to leave on a free at the end of the year. Then we've also got Elliot, who's a 16-year-old, pressing forward. He could be someone for the future, but they were offering 700k. I just thought I might as well cash out on him now, 16 years old. I don't know how he's going to end up. He could be good, he could be bad. I'm willing to take the risk to sell him out onto Swansea. And Jack is two two hundred seventy five k. He weren't going to get played. He was only going to leave at the end, on a free at the end of the year as well. He was only going to end up be going out on loan. Played well last year up in Poland, and now he's moved to Poland to a different club. Rob Sheet, just a youngster. I was never going to play. Sold him for thirty k. Almendra gone out on loan to Hangover. Better than Boca Juniors this year. Played very well there. Still couldn't get a work permit. I don't think. I can offer him one yet, 113 days till I can offer him another one. So for the time being, he needs to be out on loan still. Other than that, as you can see, like I was saying, Connor Wickham's probably the only other one worth mentioning. Tried to sell him, no one wanted him. So I've sent him out on loan to um, an Israeli club. But yeah, as you can see, it's all the youngsters have just gone out. Hopefully they just get game development. 9.75 million, but we have spent this year 35 million but let's start off with the freeze that I brought in from last year Daniel Catalidi now obviously I got him for a free he's probably our best midfielder now from star rating determination 17 free kick taking long shot so he's going to be banging him in he's going to be playing deep like playmaker stamina he's quite reasonably quick got good strength Good stamina. He's just good all round, really. Positioning's quite good. Work rate, 14. Tackling, so he's defensively good and attacking-wise good. Worth 24.5 million. 26 in his prime. He's a good, for free, he's a very good signing. Next up, on the free, Johan Gabay. Now, his mentals are good. Work rate and teamwork and determination are brilliant. He was in, he'd come in because, you know what, we let him go for free. Might as well have brought him back. Played all right as uh, Saint Etienne. It's better than, like, I don't know. It's just it's nostalgic in it to bring him back. So he'll be here just to be the veteran, but he'll probably be leaving at the end of the year for like on a free anyway. Got we got Ben Davies I spoke about earlier. 
So that's all I'm going to mention about him. What I said about earlier about him is what I'm going to talk about. And then we've got our loanee, Rian Brewster. Now, I don't, we would, we're never going to get him for a permanent, but termination's good, finishing's good. He's quick. He's quite reasonably strong. He's a good striker. Good striker to have on the bench, as we wouldn't have Benteke or anything. For a loan, 20 years old. I feel like he'd done all right at Swansea last year. Yeah, look, 11 goals in 40 games. Done decent. He's going to get game time here, so it's best of both worlds, because he's going to score goals for us get, and get game time for him. Like I said, best of both worlds. Now, we've got 19-year-old. Benoit Badisal, jumping reach, well, 6 for 4 to start off with, jumping reach 16 as well, he's quick, he's strong, heading's good, Dis determination's decent, work rate's okay, and positioning's okay, vision could be better, but he's passing and he's marking and all this is good, like I said, he's on a loan, I think I've done an option to buy, I can't 100% remember, did I? No, I don't think I did, but... Easier to see what it'd be like. We needed a sub, like reserve centre back. He's going to see what he's like, and then we'll decide if we want to sign him for uh, on a permanent at the end of the year. And the right back I was talking about, Pedro Parola. He's going to probably start while Hickey still start begins to develop. He played a right out on loan in Spain last year. He needs some game time in the Premier League. Reasonably quick, reasonably strong. Determination's good, work rate's decent, positioning that's good, marking passing's good. He's going to be a good wing back and he can play up on the wing, anywhere on the right side. Could even play in the middle, so he's quite a versatile player. Only 20, Man City wanted to sell him on loan, so that's what I've done. Now before I show you the, the rest of these, I would like to say that the transfer window hasn't ended. So if there is obviously any more that we'll go through, I will show you. But we've got another free sign in here, Jordan Ibe. Now he's only 24. Bournemouth let him go on a free last year. He played decent. One goal. Only got nine games though. He's very quick. Determination could be better. Work rate could be possibly better. Technique's good. First touch and that's good. The head in the net should be better. But he's going to be a bench player. Can play either side of the wing. So for a free, again, it's very good. He's only on, not on a lot of money. Not even on 20k. So, yeah, I feel like on a three-year deal... Acceleration's brilliant as well, so for a free, you can't go wrong really. We signed a youngster now. This one, I know he doesn't look the best, but he easily could be. He's only 16. If you did watch a Charlton West Brom game in the FA Cup in real life last or this season, sorry, he did play, and it's kind of close, close to my heart because Aaron Henry used to be in my school tutor in secondary school, and then he left my school to go play for Charlton. So it's someone I actually know. I feel like it's quite a nice touch. I'm going to try and develop him into the deep line playmaker. He's naturally fit. Determination in that needs to improve a lot. But it was only 625k. Could easily go up. He's going to get better. It's worth it's worth the effort. 511's a stretch though because I know him. But <laughs> but no, he's going to he's going to be a quality player for me in the future, I think. Now, do we go for the most expensive signing or we go for the biggest steal? Or do we go for the one in the middle? I think we'll go for the one in the middle. Now this one, Karamoko Dembele. He's going to be... I'm going to try and play him on the on the left-hand side. I'm going to try and train it so he can go up and down and cross it in instead. But at the moment, he's going to be a winger on the right-hand side. Now, the termination's good. Work rate's decent. Crossing and dribbling are good. Ag agility is brilliant. He's only 17 years old. I got him for 6.5 million. At the start of last season, as you can see, or the end of last season, sorry, as you can see, only on 12.5k on a three-year deal. I'm trying to get him out on loan, see if I can get him any more game time, but he's going to be one for the future as well. Five for four does worry me a little bit, but like I said, he's one for the future also, and it, he's only his price is only going to go up from here. Now, we'll go for the biggest steal, I say, the biggest, um, like the best deal I had. Sebastian Fazilidis. Now, we got this guy for six million. What it was, he was at um, Paderborn, and they went down five point five, five point five million actually. Sorry. Now look at this. As a ball winning midfielder, stamina seventeen, bravery sixteen, aggression seventeen, balance sixteen, determination sixteen, work rate seventeen. This bloke is going to run his socks off until he can't no more. He's only 22. He's already worth 11.75 million. 
current ability is three and a half stars potential ability is four agility is decent pace and strength is quite good positioning is good marking is good tackling is good first touch dribbling and finishing are even good this guy again is another one for the future but he's here for now as well a little bit of expensive contract but he's definitely going to be worth it now we're going the most expensive signing Ebri <laughs> is a his current ability is 3 star and his potential ability is 4 though he will be playing more than likely as the advanced playmaker his dribbling 16 balance 16 flair 17 determination 13 work rate could be better don't get me wrong technique 15 passing 14 again he's only 22 QPR went down to League 1 he was never going to play in League 1 don't get me wrong he probably is he's best for championship at the moment but he will again be one for the future he's going to be dribbling 16 like I said he's quality he can play in the Premier League easily if not then I'll admit I've, I'll hold my hands up maybe 80 million was a bit too much but he's English he's one for the future and he's good now he will he will be bagging them in he will be playing well this year but let's get on to the Man United game now. Alright, for the first game of the year against Manchester United, in goal we've got Guetta who keeps his spot, changing number to 13. Parolo on the right back position, with Rideville going to be starting a left back this year. Tompkins and Indica at centre back trying to build a partnership there, especially that Sacco's getting injured a lot more it seems. Milovovic, a uh, ball winning midfielder. Katadi. Cat I think that's how you pronounce it. Let me know if, I don't, if I'm pronouncing it wrong. A deep line playmaker. Townsend on the right. Zaha on the left. Maya behind striker. And Ayo up top. With Pettifer in goal. Hickey. Uh, Hickey. Badisil. Vasily. Dis. Bellingham. Eze. And Tyler Roberts on the bench. Man United's team's looking decent as well though. Don't get me wrong. We hope Man United. Alright, here we go. First highlight of the game in Dicker out of Bryfield. Bryfield now. Pass it to Indicker. Oh, the Tyra Martinez nicked it off him. He's at 1 0. It's not as narrowly wide. In Dicker, that was poor. He's still young, though. He's still young. I tried not to go too negative this year. I'm going to try and push for wins a lot more. I feel like our team can be good enough. I know I haven't done a lot to the first team, but on the bench now, we've got a lot more uh, strength and depth this year, without a doubt. I feel confident about replacing anyone last year. I wanted my starting, my best 11 to start every game, which they obviously couldn't. But this year, I feel like I can bring people in and out and feel confident with them playing. But it's the first half being very, very boring. Only that one highlight. It looks like we're going to go in half-time 0-0 against Man United, which, don't get me wrong, will be quite a good, quite a good result in the first game of the season. Uh, you've been unlucky so far. I am very happy with your defensive work. You weren't that bad. And you weren't that bad. But I expect better. I'm going to push the balance now. As a 0-0 at half time. We're away from home as well. We've got to take that into consideration. See now I'm just thinking. Do I take my off and try and bring Eze on? I know it's early on in the half. But that's what I'm going to do it. Maya's coming off. Eze coming on the advanced playmaker. Making his debut for. He's a competitive debut for Palace anyway. Bring some youth on. And here's a free kick for us. Catala. Oh, De Gea saves it. Is the highlight going to continue though? Which I don't really want it to. I kind of want him to end it. But Tompkins pressures. And now Martial down. Our right cuts in. He shoots and it goes over the bar. Thank God that went over. Going to make another sub in the 67th minute actually. Um, I'm going to take Ayu off. He's on the yellow card. He's not playing great. Roberts up front. I'm going to bring Parolo up, up, take Townsend off and put Hickey at right back. Bringing the youngsters on. I'm going to make all three subs quite early on. Hopefully they make a difference. But like I said, I'll take a nil-nil. Against Man United away from home. Would be a great result really. And we're looking at we're dominating with the possession. They're trying to play the counter-attacking more. But we are dominating the possession. They have, don't get me wrong, they have more shots. But clean sheet against Man United is brilliant. But, oh, I might have spoke too soon. They cross it in. Oh my god, what a save. Gieta, what a save. Can we counter? No, wan Saka now. Former pass player. Highlight cuts off. What a save, Gieta. He might have just kept us in the game there. Going into the 90, three minutes added on. And they do get a highlight. wan Saka to Kovacic. Bruno to wan Saka. Is he going to cross it in? 
running down our left hand side. He shoots though, Gieta now, gathers it, and we keep on to the ball. 92nd, 93rd minute. Is it going to end in nil? It does. Nil nil. First game of the season. I know it might have seemed boring, but it's a very, very good result at the end of the day. Shall we appreciate um uh, Yeah, he's proved a lot of people wrong. Let's praise him. You know what? Like I said, it might seem boring, but I'm taking that all, all day long. Nil-nil against Man United. Very, very good. And here's, here's the friendlies as well. 1-4-0. Lost to Philadelphia, so I chain, changed it up a bit. I was still playing the counter-attack, and I changed up to the the control possession. Beat in New York. Beat New England. Oh, drew in New England, sorry. Beat the other New York. <laughs> Then one seven nil six nil ten nil. So we bring the confidence up. Draw nil nil with Man United. Very very nice result. Where should we come back for next time? I think next are we done Wolves. Or? We'll do West Brom and Watford. That's what I think I'm going to do. Newly promoted West Brom and Watford who seem to be doing quite poorly this year. And we had a few good games against them last year. But thank you for watching today's video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and share this video out. It would be much appreciated. We're on the road to 100 subscribers and I'll see you all later.